In this video, we present the solution to question number 13 for the practice exam number two for math 1060, in which case we're asked to prove the identity of two cosine squared of theta over two equals sine squared theta over one minus cosine theta. Um, I always like to start with the more complicated side, which I'm going to argue would be the left-hand side here. It's, you, you see the theta over 2, the half-angle identity is coming into play at some point. I want to take care of that as soon as I can, because after all, the left-hand side has a theta over 2, the right-hand side only has theta. So I have to, some, at some point in the identity, convert from theta over 2 to theta, and so the half-angle identity is what I'm going to use there. So the left-hand side is equal to 2 cosine squared of theta over 2. So recall that the half, the half angle identity for cosine is the following. Uh, cosine of theta over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. It's much more fruitful, especially in this case, to use the square of the half angles, the cosine squared of theta over 2. This equals just 1 plus cosine theta, or I like to think of it as 1 half, 1 plus cosine theta. So I'm actually going to make this substitution in right here. So we get by the half angle identity, we're going to get 2 times 1 half, 1 plus cosine theta, like so. And then in which case, then you see the 2 times the 1 half, they cancel out. And so then the left-hand side simplifies just to be 1 plus cosine theta. Now, at this point, maybe you get a little bit stuck on what to do. Um, now, what personally I would do at this point is... I'm going to look at the denominator and see that, okay, look where I'm trying to go towards. I'm trying to go towards sine squared over 1 minus cosine theta. That to me, I see the 1 over my, I see the one minus cosine at the bottom. I have a 1 plus cosine currently. So this, this to me personally is like, oh, I should multiply by the conjugate. 1 minus cosine theta over 1 minus cosine theta, like so. Now, if you didn't see that, that's okay. And another way of doing this might just be to take the right-hand side and start evaluating it. You could do a little bit from the left a little bit from the right, just never make, just never do it at the same time. That's what you have to watch out for. Um, and so then if you're looking at this one on the right-hand side, you might think of multiplying by conjugates as well, uh, maybe using some pi Pythagorean identity to help you out here. But I'm gonna stick with the left-hand side here. If we FOIL out the numerator, we're gonna get one minus cosine squared, more specifically, one times one, which is one, one times negative cosine, cosine times one, those cancel out, and then you get a negative cosine squared. This sits above, of course, one minus cosine theta. This is the denominator we're looking for right here, so that's that's a good sign. What about the numerator, of course? To get the numerator, well, one minus cosine squared, there's some quadratic terms there. That makes me think about the Pythagorean relationship. Notice, of course, that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. This tells me, of course, that sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared, which is exactly what we're looking for, isn't it? Uh, we end up with then next sine squared theta over one minus cosine theta, and that's equal to the right-hand side, like so. When working on these trigonometric identities, it's very important that you always write down the angle. On this question, it's very critical because you have different angles in play. You have a theta over 2 and a theta. We should never write things like, uh, for example, we should never write cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. That's how we say it in words, but in terms of written notation, our, our notation should be precise. So we need to include the theta here. If we don't mention the angles when we prove trigonometric identities, we're going to get some demerits on an exam. So make sure you always write the angle out, especially on this one where different angles are being involved in the same, in the same proof.